Hello, my name is Clayton from Build Your CNC. Today I'm going to show you how to put the backboard or table onto our Green Lean. Uh, it's our newest machine. Uh, the tools that you're going to need is, uh, at one point you're going to need a helper to put the board up onto the machine. You're going to need a drill, a Phillips head screwdriver bit, a Phillips head screwdriver, a long quarter inch uh, drill bit, uh, you'll see why it needs to be long uh, once you get behind the machine. The splines make it where you have to have a long bit. Uh, a short bit uh, that's quarter inch, a sixteenth inch bit, and this is called a Forstner bit. It's half inch. Uh, it, it's going to make a flat finish on the bottom of the, uh, unlike a countersink, which is going to be curved in. Uh, then you're going to need a couple of uh, like one inch deck screws or, or drywall screws will work. This is just going to be to hold the board in place so you can mark the holes. Uh, you're going to need 14 uh, quarter inch nuts, quarter inch uh, washers, and two inch quarter inch bolts. Uh, so you're going to need 14 sets of those. So the first thing we're going to do on the machine, you'll notice that you have these little lips or, or ledges on the bottom here. This is on all the splines. That is for you to put the board up onto. So if I can get my helper to come over here and we're going to put the board up. And we're going to make sure we set them on that ledge. And then on this side down here, we're going to push it down in. After you get the board up here, before you actually mount it, in the original instructions, you were told to put the uh, uh, tabs, the hold tabs, sticking out this way on this spline. You're going to need to grab your screwdriver, and to take it off, you can use a drill bit, uh, screwdriver bit. You don't want to put it on with that so that you don't strip it out, but you're going to take off both the top and the bottom. I've already done the bottom, so I'm just going to show you doing the top here. And you're going to flip it around so that it sticks out the other direction. And I'll show you why in just a minute. Now that we have our hold tab turned around on both the top and the bottom, we're going to bring our board over till it, till it goes right over top of that one spine, and it should line up with the edge of the machine down here, because this is a 4x8 sheet. That's why you have to turn around these, because if you didn't turn around, it wouldn't get to the other side of the spine to be able to catch that for holding it on there. Once you have it up there, you're going to take your deck screws and your screwdriver drill. You're going to go behind the machine. You're going to come back behind the machine, and you're going to put your deck screws in one in each of the four corners of the board, going through the hold tab into the board that you just put up. This way it'll keep it in place and not fall down on you. And you'll go to the other end and put in two more. Okay, we got our board up there now. Uh, this is just a temporary uh, mounting of it. The reason I come back out here though is to change my bit to the quarter inch long bit but I also want to tell you, we're using a 4x8 sheet, which is the standard sheet you can get with, you know, without any kind of custom ordering. 4x8 uh, is just fine. You're going to line it up at that end, as I said. Down at this end, it's not going to go all the way down to the end of the machine, you'll notice. But that's okay, because the size of the gantry does not allow the machine to cut further than the end of this board anyways. So this dead space over here without a table is not going to be an issue. Okay, uh, we're going to change out to the long quarter inch bit. We're going to go back behind there and mark each and every one of the holes, the uh, hold tabs, uh, so that we know where to, to drill our holes. Okay, we're back behind the machine again, 
You don't have to worry about the four corners because you've already got those marked because of the fact that you put screws in them. So we're going to go with each and every other spline and this is the reason we needed the long bit because the spline here doesn't allow you to get a short bit close enough to this hole so that you can uh, mark this hole. You're just going to go through each and every hole with the quarter inch bit and you're just going to do a quick little tap to mark that hole. You're going to go down to the bottoms and do those too. Just a quick little tap to mark that hole. We don't want to go into the, into the board too much and actually go through. And you'll see why in a minute because we're going to take this down and do a little bit of a different style of, of drilling the holes to make it where you can flush mount the screws. Once you have all the holes marked, you're going to go ahead and take off your long bit and switch back to your screwdriver bit. And we're going to take these screws back out. You'll get your helper again to help you take the board down. And you're going to set the board on a flat surface like a table or something like that. And you're going to want to set the board with your marks that you made up. Once you have your board down, switch your bit to the little 16th inch bit that I told you you'd need. And on each and every one of the holes that you marked, you're going to, right in the very center of it, you're going to drill all the way through a little 16th inch hole. And you're going to do that to every single one of them. And where you drilled, uh, or where you put your screws in, you'll have smaller holes. Just go ahead and finish those off all the way through the board. And you do that to all 14 of them. Once you have your six, uh, 14 16 inch holes drilled, you're going to switch to the Forstner bit. And we're going to go ahead and flip the board over because it's the other side of the board that we need to use the Forstner bit on. And that's because that's the side of the board that's going to be facing out. And we're using the Forstner bit to create a pocket for the head of the bolt to go sit down in so that it's actually like sunk in. Um, the reason that we're using the Forstner bit instead of a countersink is because if you look at the head of the bolt, the head of the bolt is not angled in. It's a flat on the bottom of the head. So we need that flat space for this bolt head to sink down into so that instead of sticking up, it's sunk down where you can't see it. Get your helper to go ahead and help you flip the board over. And the Forstner bit has a little tip, like a, 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 a guide nipple essentially. You're going to take that and in each one of your little 16th inch holes, you're going to put that Forstner bit nipple in there and you're going to drill until you're just flush like that where just the, the entire the entire uh, section here that's, that's fat is buried down into the wood that'll leave you a deep enough pocket for the bolt heads to fit down in and you're going to do that to every single one of your holes Once you've actually gotten all your holes drilled, you don't have to flip the board back over to do the next step. You just take out your Forstner bit and go with your short quarter inch. You could use your long one that you used for the marking for this, but I feel that it's better to use a short one so you have better stability. You're going to go down through the center of each and every one of these. You have a hole going all the way through with that 16 inch bit uh, that's going to mark the center still. Uh, you're going to go down through the center of each and every one of these and finish off the center with a quarter inch hole. Once you have all your holes drilled, it's time to get your friend again and pick up the board and place it back up on the ledge on the machine. And then move it down into position. Yeah. Now, now, and line it up with the end of your machine again. 
when you first go home to Medea. And then you grab your quarter inch bolts with washer and nut. Your quarter inch bolt goes through from the front. And should, if everything went right, go right through and line up. As I said, they should line up with the spline and go right through the hole. And then you're going to take your washer and put it on to prevent the nut that you're going to put on next from pulling through the board. And you take a crescent wrench and a screwdriver, which right now I'm just hand tightening this, and tighten every one of them up. But I would wait until you actually have all 14 of them in before you tighten them all the way down. And then you just do all 14 of those exactly like that. Before you actually put your board on, we recommend highly that you actually attach it to the wall first. You're going to be able to attach it to the wall after your board is on if you have a short body drill. Because down on the bottom screws, where the bottom hold tabs to go to the wall are, you'll need a short body screw to get behind your board to be able to get the screws in. Um, so again, we really highly recommend that you actually attach it to the wall before you mount your board permanently. Uh, once you have it attached to the wall and you have all your uh, quarter inch bolts and um, nuts and washers on hand tightened, you're going to need either a uh, deep well socket or a wrench and you're going to reach around the top side of your board and you're going to put your uh, wrench or socket on each nut and you're going to tighten them down and then you're going to reach around the bottom side and you're going to do the same thing you're going to tighten them down and you're going to do that to all 14 of them now once you have that complete you have your backboard or your table essentially for this now you can use this as the sacrificial board, but you risk your bit going deep enough to hit these bolts, even though we flush mounted them. So we recommend that this is actually like a table, and if you don't need the extra three quarter inches of Z-axis depth to be, you know, working with your material, we recommend highly that you mount an actual board to this to be your sacrificial board. The reason being is because not only will you not have to go through this entire process every single time you want to replace the board, uh, but you don't risk the, the, the hitting of the bolt heads with your bit and breaking your bit. So that's all, we, that's all there is to it, and uh, enjoy your machine.